legal campaign to secure a new referendum has begun. But what about in our towns, cities and even around our kitchen tables? Well, let's speak to two campaigners. Dr Marcia Scott supports the case for an independent Scotland through her involvement with Women for Independence. And the former Labour MP Pamela Nash is now Chief Executive of Scotland in Union. Well, Marcia Scott, if I can just come to you first. I mean, do you think that now is the moment where a grassroots campaign, activists who are in favour of independence across Scotland are really going to start mobilising? Well, I think it's important to say we never stopped. You know, we've been we've been holding local councils all across Scotland since the, the 2014 referendum. Um, and we've been campaigning on issues like health care, abortion care services, justice, you know, you name it. So I suppose um, w one of the big differences from the last referendum is we have a network. We have certainly parts of the of the Scotland have been less active than others. But I do think that there's an awful lot of infrastructure there for us that just wasn't in place the last time. And will it be difficult, though, do you think, Marcia Scott, to really engage with undecided voters or to try and convert those who would currently vote no uh, when there's so much uncertainty around when this vote will take place, if this vote will take place? Well, I think, um, I, I think you know, we'd be worried if the vote were next week or next month. Um, there's many discussions that, a lot, that have to happen. I really like your reference to kitchen tables because that's where Women for Indy does its best work. You know, we are, we've learned a lot from the last time. So I think, um, and certainly we know that um, in the uncertain days of the last referendum, um, we were, you know, we were pretty surprised by some of the fear tactics and the, and the folk, you know, the mantles. So, you know, the absence of women and so much of the discussion. And we're really looking forward to a campaign in which some of that is better. Um, we learned a lot from the last time. We know that, you know, our lessons about um, okay. getting out of our bubbles is really, really important. And that does mean going back to our kitchen tables, listening to women first, talking about what matters to them. We know about women's voting behavior and that women vote around you know, the issues that matter to them, like public services, and those are the issues we'll be talking about. OK, well, Pamela and Ash, if I can just come to you, I mean, what will be the approach of Scotland and Union and other pro-Union campaign groups? Because the sense that's been coming from the UK government is that they just don't really want to engage on this. I mean, is that going to be the approach of groups like yours? Well, I think that the first thing to make clear is that it is highly unlikely that there's going to be a referendum just because there's a, a date put out there yesterday. Um, I, I could say that I'm setting a date to, to run a marathon, but it's not it's not going to happen. Um, and so th th there won't be a referendum and Nicola Sturge and the SNP do not have a mandate, not only for a referendum, but not to, to waste their resources and time on this at the moment. They are not listening to the people of Scotland. And I found it very interesting there that, Marcia, you started off saying that um, your campaigning never stopped with, with Women for Independence. And that's part of the problem. Um, the Yes movement did not listen to the people of Scotland after 2014. But Pamela and Ash, do you not need to actively make the case for the union? I mean, is it going to be enough just to try to ignore this issue, try not to engage with this issue? Aren't you in danger of opening up a space for people like Marsha Scott to go out there and convince people of, of her case for independence? No, we're not. And, and just to be clear, Scotland and Union was set up in response to the fact that the, the Yes campaign didn't stop and we are continually making the positive case for Scotland to remain in the UK. And we will do that because the fact is the referendum won't happen because people of Scotland don't want it. Um, it's not about process. It's not about um, Scottish government not being allowed to do it. It's about the fact that people of Scotland don't want it. Um, there's three polls been out um, recently showing that like, it's around about a third of people want a referendum next year. Okay. So they're going against what the people of Scotland want.